both there at the moment because we're going to move on to the issue of mayors because could Salford be getting its own Boris? The idea of having directly elected mayors to run local councils has been around for a while, but there are still none here in the North West. That could change, though, when Salford holds a referendum on the issue this week. So how does it work in practice? Well, Mansfield in the East Midlands has had an elected mayor for a decade now. So we sent our reporter Elaine Dunkley there to find out. <laughs> Mansfield in Nottinghamshire is a town known for its mining, its market and gold medalist Rebecca Adlington. And you can also add elected mayor to the list. So we've got meeting rooms here, have we? Meeting rooms here, yeah, which they can buy. Tony Eggington has been the elected mayor since 2002. This new business park has been his baby. So what do you do for the people of Mansfield? I keep them optimistic and, uh, you know, I keep them thinking that I'd like to think every day that, you know, Mansfield is a bit different. It's weathering the storm a little bit better than, than many other places and uh, we, we have got ongoing opportunities. When Tony was first elected, he was standing as an independent in a Labour-run council. He decides who to appoint in his cabinet. The, the biggest benefit, I think, was that it would speed up the decision-making process. Uh, and I think that is still quite right, you know, ex executive mayors have executive powers. He also got rid of the fleet of civic limousines, closed the council members bar and brought in free garden waste recycling. Now this site has been like this for over 10 years. But there's been criticism that areas such as the former site of the once famous Mansfield Brewery has been left run down and the town is suffering. The results are here for us to see behind us now and in other parts of the town where for eight years all the mayor has done is manage to climb. Uh, we need proper regeneration, we need ideas and fresh ideas, and that's not what's happening here. What would you like to see? Well, I, I think uh, the, the, the system of a, a leader of the council from the majority group with a cabinet uh, drawn, on, drawn from that majority group is, is, is the appropriate way of running local government. Elected mayors, as well as grabbing votes, are also known for grabbing headlines. Boris Johnson is probably in the lead with column inches. And then there was the man in the monkey suit, the Mayor of Hartlepool, a.k.a. Hangus the Monkey. And as Salford considers whether an elected mayor is a good idea, there's no shortage of Salfordian celebrities. Perhaps last year's Big Brother winner and King of the Gypsies Paddy Doherty could be a runner. Or there's Oscar winner Sir Ben Kingsley. I think personality does matter. I mean, I think the key attributes you need to be a good local mayor is you have to have personality. You have to be a good communicator to sort of express your vision for the local area. You have to be able to sort of, you know, be able to get stuff done, be able to negotiate deals, but also compromise with your political opposition. And it's quite rare to find someone with all of those different traits. One of the big questions is, does an elected mayor represent value for money? In Mansfield, the mayor's office currently costs £470,000 a year, which is taken from the local government budget. So, who better to ask than the good people of Mansfield? It is everywhere. I mean, it, it, it is a bit, it's, it's in the newspapers, gives us commentaries each week in the chat. He, he attends a lot of functions, does a lot of presented prizes and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But he is a good man. Elected mayors. I don't agree with any on it. None at all. You've got one here, why not? I don't. I, because I can't see the community. I've lived in Mansfield all my life and they've done nothing for me at all. I think very often uh, when you've got your parties that it's done as you've got, um, it's better to have probably somebody who's always independent of a party, um, uh, shall we say, politics. Absolutely no idea. Didn't even know we've got an elected mayor. Well, <laughs> Mansfield may have been one of the first towns to elect a mayor, but after 10 years, it seems the debate over whether the town is heading in the right direction continues. Well, joining us now in the studio is Stephen Morris, who's the North West Chairman of the English uh, Democrats. Stephen, you do think it's a good idea to have a mayor in Salford. Uh, would you be standing? Uh, that's not decided as yet because we're part of a mayoral alliance. So, but uh, you'd like to? Uh, I wouldn't mind to because it's my home city. I yeah. uh, brought up in Swinton, so I won't, certainly won't mind the. Uh, why why do you own. think it's time for Salford to have a mayor, particularly at this this particular time when perhaps it's, it can ill afford it? Can it ill afford it? The, the costings can be made quite uh, easily, the savings, uh, as we've seen with Leicester. Um, just the mayor actually replaces a, a level of government, doesn't 
at the level of government. But I suppose the referendum itself will cost quite well, a lot. Well, the referendum, because of our idea is to follow Leicester's, which has just changed, which is just to have the elected mayor, the ceremonial mayor, and the replace the chief executive all in one go. Uh, just replacing the chief executive would save £200,000. So as in review of costs, the actual cost savings will be met within one year and no, nothing to the test bed. The idea hasn't really caught on though, has it? Because since 2000 we've only got 12 elected mayors yeah. in the country and a couple of those are now reversing. Stoke has, Doncaster, which also has an English yeah. Democrat there, they're also holding a referendum to get rid of theirs. Yeah. So it's not really getting the, the public's attention. Well, if, if you look at the way Stoke was, there was a lot of people not happy with the actual ruling, not necessarily but that. why do you think people aren't taking it up? Um, people are not actually happy with politics as a whole. You've got to try and re-engage people. The only way you can re-engage them is to make sure that their vote is actually counted. Now, with a directly elected mayor, every vote counts. Right, so, well, um, obviously Hazel, MP for Salford, but you don't think this is a good idea for Salford? No, I don't. Um, I, I always believe that if you are going to have an elected mayor, you need an elected mayor for a big strategic area. Why is like that? That makes it sound like Salford's perhaps not an important enough place. Well, Salford is incredibly important, as you well know to me. But, why uh, mayor? but if you're making big decisions about transport, about planning, about the economy, then you need to make those almost on a regional basis, because that's how you attract the big But trends. you have always been in favour of mayor, elected mayors generally. Yeah, for, right for, for, those, for those big areas, yes. For Salford. What sort of big areas? Like, for places like London, for Greater Manchester, um, where you're looking at big decisions around that sort of regional economy. Cities. No, well, it's, it's a matter for the people of those cities to decide in a referendum. But, but, but I'm only pointing that out because, because when you were Community Secretary, you did say that you believed that cities should have elected mayors. I think where you've got a big area, a big population, you need to make some big strategic decisions. Having somebody who is accountable and visible is important. In Salford, this referendum is going to cost something like £250,000. This is at a time when the council is incredibly strapped for cash and the platform that they're standing on is to cut the council tax by 50%. Very populist, right? What does that mean? Cutting home helps, cutting services to children with special educational needs, meaning that our education so, system will be cut. So we, I think it's a totally wrong thing to do at this time. So are you afraid that it's perhaps going to be, it's more about personalities than policies? Are you worried about that? Um, I don't just think it's about personalities. You need somebody who's got sufficient grasp of how you run a city, the politics and the policies, to be able to do a good job. And simply saying, we'll slash the council tax by 50% is unrealistic, it's populist politics, at its worst, and it will damage the city at a very difficult time. Ben Wallace, I mean, the Salford mayoral referendums are perhaps the warm-ups to, to the other ones the big, in the bigger cities, Manchester and Liverpool, in May. Um, we've heard this week that in Liverpool, the Liberal Democrats are concerned that the, the City Council may just bring in um, the mayors without holding a referendum, which they are entitled to do. Uh, what is your feelings about that? Well, I, I, I would really believe that if... You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if there is a local demand, and I'm quite enjoying the sort of argument mm -hmm. between Salford, um, you know, if there's a local demand, it should be up to them. I don't agree that it should be imposed. I think there should be some form of referendum. I think it would be a good thing uh, for Manchester and Salford and everywhere else to make that decision. But, you know, I, I, what I can say from being a Lancashire MP, that Manchester, as a city, as opposed to Salford, operates extremely well. I think it's well run. It ain't broke. Don't fix it. And I think in Salford, you know, there is a very popular, uh, a very uh, dynamic MP. And, and I think a part of these issues are driven about the public's desire for some form of character, some form of, uh, uh, you know, fallible person to represent them rather than mm. over-polished politicians that we see nationally and I think maybe we should be addressing more why is it in political parties across the board we get less and less sort of local people with you know all sorts of characteristics yeah. uh, that are probably better leaders than people that try and spin their way out of everything. Yeah, so you're saying it's a bit sort of X factor po uh, politics, right? No, I, I, I think, first of all, let the people decide. If people Absolutely. in Salford want a mayor, let them have a mayor. It's not for but, me. But basically, you don't think the people in Salford should decide. I'm expressing my he view. I'm expressing my view, but it's absolutely up but to you the don't people think there to be a decide. referendum. There's a referendum. It's going to cost a lot of money, but at the end of the day, it's, it's the decision of local people. I think the good people of Salford have got a bit more common sense than to go along with this line. Okay, I'm, I'm terribly sorry because it, it's, it's a great point. Very there where you're saying if it's not broad, Broken, right? It is broken. The council's nearly £600 million in debt. Crime is well above the national average. Council tax is the largest in the area. Okay. It is broken. Well, I am going to challenge every single one of those. We will find out 
what the people of Salford think in the early hours of Friday. It's one that could go on and on, isn't it? And we'll be bringing you the results in next week's programme. Now, with a look at this week's main political stories, here's Jill Dunnigan. Morning through two of